Greetings once again, friends. Uh, this is Dr. Adi Adibanjo, uh, bringing you greetings in Jesus' name from uh, my office here in Katy, Texas. Just wanted to come uh, once again to encourage us as we deal with the situations created by the pandemic caused by the COVID-19 virus. Uh, these are ever-present and real uh, situations that we all have to deal with. And um, I just wanted to reassure us that God is still in control and that things will get better very soon. It is very important at times like this to make sure that our focus remains in the right place, uh, that we stay on God's side. And so we must steep ourselves in the word of God, in the truths of God's word, uh, so that we're not carried away and just you know, carried along by the tsunami of information that is coming from the authorities and coming from various sources through the media, uh, many of which are instructive and beneficial, some of which are doing nothing but instilling fear and raising our anxiety levels. It is important that we uh, maintain our focus on the truths of God's Word. And so I just want to share a few things with us today, a few thoughts. Uh, to help us along this line, uh, especially during this time when uh, most of us are uh, forced uh, for obvious reasons to stay in our homes. Uh, even uh, our gatherings for worship have been affected. And so it is very important at times like this to uh, continue to hear the truth amidst all the other information that we are receiving. Now, this um, viral attack is a true attack on humanity. It's almost like we're at war uh, against this uh, viral attack, and it's a war against humanity. Uh, there's no nation seemingly that has been exempted from uh, this attack. Many nations are uh, having to deal with um, sickness, disease, death, and um, you know the impact that this is having on the economies on the on just the livelihood and the and the life in those nations and so it is a battle and a very real one indeed uh, we're in a battle for our lives so to say and so uh, in such a situation we cannot and must not adopt uh, this posture of passive resignation uh, thinking that there's very little that we can do except just keep ourselves isolated, uh, locked away in our homes, um, even, um, you know, in response to the call from the authorities for social distancing. Uh, that kind of passive response does not do anything to help us to ultimately um, see the end of this thing speedily. Even the separation and isolation itself, uh, after a little while, can begin to create a new set of challenges uh, for many people, especially those that maybe live alone, uh, those who are elderly. Uh, and so this is ultimately not the answer. The answer is for this attack to stop uh, as quickly as possible. Now, I mentioned earlier that this is an all-out battle against an attack that I believe is um, rooted in evil itself uh, because anything that's come on such a grand scale to steal, to kill, and to destroy uh, is coming from the enemy of our souls. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, uh, Jesus speaking, that the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now this disease has killed so many people, stolen uh, and affected economies, uh, people's jobs, people's uh, income, people's livelihood. And so uh, it is not a joke. Uh, it is we are at war against this. And we have to realize that in a situation like this, we are not helpless. We're not helpless in a situation 
like this, we must realize that beyond the physical battle against the virus, against the spread of the virus, and against the sickness and disease and even death that it's causing, uh, we're in a spiritual battle against the root of this, which is um, of this evil scourge and um, the fear and the terror and the anxiety that it is bringing along with it. We are not helpless. Um, far from it. Indeed, the Bible lets us know that um, we have weapons at our disposal that we can use in situations like this. Uh, I'll draw your attention to the scriptures in the book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 10, um, verses 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5, I read from the NIV. It says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. That's fine. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, this, this scripture, I mean, kind of lets us know that even though we live in this world, we don't wage war the way the world does. We have weapons to fight with that are not of this world. They are not man-made, man-supplied weapons. They're not of this world. And this is a truth we must embrace, and not just embrace, but we must recall uh, at times like this. These are spiritual weapons that are energized by God himself. And uh, the Bible says they are mighty and powerful. They are mighty and powerful. They help us to cope with situations like this, to pull down strongholds in our mind, strongholds of fear, strongholds of anxiety, strongholds of doubt, uh, uh, and to cast down imaginations or thoughts that uh, oppose the truths of God's word. Now, this is something that is very real in times like this. I'll give you a scenario. In seasons like this, you know, imagine you going to sleep and waking up in the morning and uh, you have a kind of a scratchy throat and um, maybe a little sniffle in your nostrils. Uh, there's a thought that pops into your mind. Could it be? <laughs> Could it really be? Could I be affected? And so th these are seeds uh, of thoughts that are implanted in our minds to, uh, to get us into anxiety and fear. But we must battle against things like this and stand gr our ground against them so we don't succumb to the suggestion, to the temptation uh, of the enemy uh, to subscribe to fear and thereby opening the door uh, for what he's peddling to take root in our lives. So uh, we, we have to take it to these truths. Um, thank God that we have weapons that we can actively use to counter these attacks. Once again, as believers, as the church of Jesus Christ, we are not helpless uh, in situations like this. Uh, these weapons help us to stay on God's side, to stay focused on uh, the source of our help and the one who ultimately is able to vanquish this foe and to uh, rid our earth of this scourge called COVID-19. You know, a verse came to me recently that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all those that dwell therein. That's in Psalm 24 verse 1. So the earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. He has bequeathed this earth to us as joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And so it is our responsibility to reclaim the earth, to reclaim this world and the people in it back to the owner, which is God and not to allow uh, anything to come and ravage, uh, kill, destroy the earth that God has wonderfully created for us. And so 
um, we have to engage these weapons um, of our warfare. And uh, what are some of these weapons uh, we've been, and I'm sure we all um, have been engaging some of these uh, in the days and weeks that have passed. Uh, weapons like prayer. You know, last time I mentioned uh, that, that we need to pray. Prayer is a very powerful weapon. Another example of a weapon is to engage the use of the name of Jesus, to exercise our authority, our God-given authority, uh, using the name of Jesus, the name that's above every other name, that's above coronavirus, to release the authority of that name, to stay the hand of this affliction and drive it back. Uh, weapons like the spoken word of God. We must make sure that the word of our testimony, the words that we're speaking, line up with the truths of God's word. That we don't uh, say confederacy, we don't fear the fear that everybody else is fearing, but we uh, remember God in our hearts and uh, keep our tongue and our words in line with what He is saying. Uh, as we uh, declare uh, verses like Psalm 91 uh, over our lives, over our families, over our nation, and indeed over the nations of the earth. But the weapon that I want to speak particularly about today is the weapon of the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, the blood that Jesus shed for us um, when he died on the cross of Calvary, uh, there's a song that reminds us that it will never lose its power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Now, I woke up this morning and um, just in the moment of wakefulness, the Spirit of God just brought this truth back to my spirit uh, that there is power in the blood of Jesus and that power has not been lost. Uh, that song says that it reaches to the highest mountains and flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives her strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Now, whether you are on the highest mountain of um, safety and security, where you have isolated and insulated yourself, protected yourself, taken every precaution, and you are, you know, uh, you have enough to sustain you for months to come, so you are on the highest mountain right there. But the truth is, the blood of Jesus is higher than that. Um, even with our best efforts sometimes, uh, sometimes we cannot prevent things from happening. And so even on that high mountain, uh, we may not remain untouched by this affliction, but the blood of Jesus reaches out to you who are there on that high mountain of safety and security. Uh, but also, it flows to the lowest valley. And uh, for those that may be right now in the valley of the shadow of death, where uh, you've been affected by this disease, you are dealing with it, uh, maybe it's even uh, ravaging your body, you're maybe on the verge of dying, the blood of Jesus flows to you. Say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you. And the blood of Jesus flows to that lowest valley to rescue you, to deliver you, to bring you up out of there, heal you completely and set you free. And so that's the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood has always been associated with um, uh, deliverance and exemption from plagues and afflictions all through Scripture. We remember in the history of the nation of Israel when they were in bondage in Egypt and there were plagues afflicting the land of Egypt. Uh, God gave instructions at some point to the leader of that nation uh, called Moses, instructing them to kill a lamb and apply the blood of that lamb to the entryway of their homes, to the doorpost and the, and the lintel of the door. So forming a, a, a barrier, basically a mark upon their homes. And he says in Exodus chapter 12 and in verse 13, that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That means that affliction, that plague that was destroying uh, when the blood, of, the blood of the lamb was visible, 
it will pass over their households. Now that word pass over uh, means literally to leap, jump over or skip over. Now, basically what that is saying is that at the application of the blood, afflictions, plagues, diseases will have to skip over us. Uh, even if it's affecting people around, which we don't pray that it does, but I just wanna reassure you that by the blood of Jesus Christ, that will skip over you, over your household, over your family, that it will not affect you. And so um, that, you know, was a very, very powerful time. It was on the heels of that, that the nation of Israel got delivered from uh, Egypt. And that was a type and shadow of things to come. Uh, the true Lamb of God was Jesus Christ. And he is the Lamb of God that was slain and uh, by his blood, we have been redeemed from uh, the hands of the enemy. He says we're redeemed not with corruptible things like silver or gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without spot or blemish, who was foreordained before the foundation of the earth, but was revealed in this latter times for us. That's in First Peter in chapter 1. And so the blood of Jesus is... Uh, is a powerful weapon that's available to us in our battle against um, the afflictions that come upon the earth. In Revelation chapter 12, chapter 12, it says that they overcame him, that's the enemy, uh, the, the, the destroyer, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And so the blood of Jesus is still powerful to overcome any attack from the enemy uh, as we maintain the right confession, holding fast to the word of God uh, that we speak. And so uh, it's very important for us to remember this truth at such a time as this, that there is, we're not helpless. We have the blood of Jesus Christ available to us now. Um, Moses, when he was instructed to do that, the Bible lets us know that he obeyed and carried out that instruction by faith. Now, Jesus has given us such an instruction also, because he said in, um, uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, that uh, we must remember him, remember his sacrifice, remember the things that he did for us through his death, the shedding of his blood, uh, to put those things in remembrance. Because there's a tendency for us when we face difficulty for us to forget. But he gave us something that we can use to remember him and call to mind and put us and him in remembrance of the things that he has done for us and the protection that's available to us uh, through his blood. Um, how do we do that? There was an interesting scripture in John chapter 6 when Jesus was speaking to his disciples. In John chapter 6 and in, I believe it's in verse 53, um, it says, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And so from that verse we gather that there is life in the blood of Jesus. The life-giving um, power of the blood of Jesus is what overwhelms and overcomes anything that brings death and destruction. There is life in the blood. And so we, as we partake of this blood uh, of Jesus Christ, it is able to impart life to us in place of death. And um, I said at the beginning that we cannot adopt this helpless posture of just waiting to see what happens if we get affected uh, if we are lucky enough to escape it, no. Um, that is not our stand. Our stand is we go on the offensive using the weapons God has given us, one of which is the blood of Jesus Christ. And how can we do this? Which is where uh, I am really coming to today. I want to give you um, uh, a reminder that even as individuals and as families in our homes, we can partake of the Lord's Supper, of the Holy Communion. And there is power in that 
to protect us, to shield us by the power of the blood of Jesus from every affliction that may be around us. So just reminding us of that truth that, um, you know, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, that the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Jesus Christ? So what does that mean? It means that we can take uh, representations of the blood of Jesus, like grape juice, whatever juice you have available to you in your home, and you can bless it. Uh, you can, as you bless that, uh, it becomes representative of the blood of Jesus. And as you partake of that as a family, uh, you are, it's a communion uh, of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so uh, we don't have to wait to go to church. Indeed, right now, um, our gatherings together um, uh, is not possible in the current dispensation. Uh, many of us are uh, partaking of um, virtual services, um, but how many know it is difficult to have communion on the internet? That's why I want to encourage you as an individual, as a family, to uh, get your family together and partake of the Lord's Supper together. Put yourselves in remembrance of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed and the power that there is in that blood. Now, who can bless that cup for it to become the communion of the blood of Jesus? You can, as a believer. You can speak blessings upon it, pray over it, um, and um, you know, partake of it together with your family uh, to remind you of the power that there is in the blood of Jesus and um, that blood goes to work on your behalf to shield you from every plague and every disease they have to pass over you. This is something that uh, we must do by faith um, just like Moses obeyed that instruction by faith uh, and it brought deliverance to the entire nation of Israel we also must or we can obey this instruction by faith and um, see the deliverance of the Lord. We don't have to be afraid. We have too much at our disposal for us to be fearful of what is going on. God is with us. He's given us weapons that we can use to overcome um, the, the, the challenges that we face in this, in this life. You know, I, I'm always encouraging my family, my kids, in fact, this morning, uh, we got together in our living room and did this very thing. We had um, communion together, reminding ourselves of who we are and who our Lord is. Um, but I, I told them this, I said, you cannot remember someone you have not acknowledged. Remembrance always follows acknowledgement. If you have not acknowledged Jesus, his sacrifice, the blood that he has shed for you, then how can you remember it? And so I just want to uh, seize this opportunity to encourage you. If you have never acknowledged Jesus as your Lord and Savior, acknowledge his sacrifice uh, uh, on the cross of Calvary, the shedding of his blood and uh, his death, uh, his resurrection and all that he did just for you uh, this is a good time to do it as you acknowledge that what you're saying is this Jesus I believe that indeed your sacrifice uh, was enough to redeem me to rescue me from sin and from every affliction that may come my way and you can do so as you just cry out to the Lord Bible says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved God does not will that anyone shall perish, but that every single person will come to repentance, acknowledgement of the sacrifice of his son Jesus, so they may receive the free gift of salvation and um, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. On, on the heels of that, then you can call that to remembrance. Once again, there is no remembrance without acknowledgement. 
And so I encourage you, if you haven't done so, to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. Uh, it's very simple. Just put your faith in Jesus Christ. Call upon his name. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and um, to be your Lord and Savior. And he does so right away. Um, before I finish this uh, message to you, I just want to give you a quick uh, story about the efficacy of this that I'm sharing with you. Uh, several years ago, um, in the early days of uh, ministry for me as a uh, missionary, I was spending some time in uh, Nigeria and I happened to be staying with a very you know, precious um, couple. My uh, uncle and aunt, they like, were like parents to me. And um, uh, one of the seasons when I was staying with them, my auntie, precious woman, loved the Lord, uh, but she was afflicted. Uh, she got sick. And it just seemed like that sickness would not abate. We prayed for her. Um, she prayed, um, you know, took some medication, but it just seemed not to be going away. And so one day, uh, one evening, uh, it was late at night. Actually, I was praying, spent some time in prayer. And um, the Spirit of God just impressed upon me to go have communion with my auntie and, um, at that very hour. And so right away, promptly I got up and obeyed, went downstairs, knocked on their door, she and her husband, and I told them, uh, I would like to, you know, serve communion, let us partake of communion together, because I believe that uh, the broken body of Jesus, by whose stripes we were healed, and his shed blood, there is power in that to bring restoration and deliverance from affliction. And so... Um, at that time of the night, we gathered together, we partook of communion together and um, went to bed. And I tell you that this, by a few hours later in the morning, she woke up completely healed, completely restored uh, to the glory of God. And we were overjoyed, just very grateful to God for His mercy, but for um, the, the truth of His word and the efficacy of the weapons that he has given us to combat uh, the afflictions that come against us. So I just wanted to share that with you, just to encourage you that this is real, this is true. Um, I want to ask you to uh, make this a reality in your life, in your home, as you gather your family together around a, a covenant meal called the Lord's Supper. Just take a little be, uh, piece, few pieces of bread and some juice, apple juice, grape juice, oranges, whatever you have uh, available to you. Don't say, oh, I don't have Welch's grape juice, so I can do. No, whatever you have available to you would do. Just use that and bless it, and it becomes the communion of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And as you do so and partake of that, you are being proactive in um, engaging um, the attack of the enemy, in pushing back the hand of the enemy, in protecting your family uh, from um, involvement in this affliction called COVID-19 virus. Now, um, I would love to hear from you uh, as you do this. Once again, if you, I pray, we have continued to pray for you, uh, pray for uh, the nations and pray for this affliction to stop. Uh, but if perchance you have been affected by this, I'm promising you that as you partake of this communion in faith, you can watch God reach down and just touch you and the power of the blood of Jesus rescue you, overcome that affliction, deliver you completely. I believe this with all my heart, and I encourage you to put your faith in Jesus Christ, in the power there is in His blood uh, to rescue you, to protect you, to shield you from harm in the days that we live in. So please um, be encouraged. Uh, once again, you don't have to be afraid. Just put your faith in Jesus Christ, and you will overcome. Um, let me pray for you. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that we can call upon your name 
in the time of trouble and you said you will hear us and answer us. Thank you for the powerful weapons you've given us as we engage uh, in the battle against the afflictions and challenges that we face in life. You've told us already that we should be of good cheer. You have overcome the world. But in the meantime, we don't adopt a passive um, uh, posture of just, uh, you know, hopelessness and just waiting to see what happens. No, Father God, we go on the offensive against this onslaught of hell, against humanity, and we take back what belongs to us, the earth, the fullness thereof, and the world and all that dwell therein. We pray, Father God, for the many that have been afflicted by this, once again, for the many that have lost their lives, their loved ones. We pray comfort over them. We pray peace over them. But Lord, we push back this affliction we say no more in the name of jesus we command this affliction to be stayed to be driven back and we say the tide of the battle is turned and the victory is ours thank you father for the power of the blood of jesus i plead that blood over this nation of america over the nations of the earth over the U europe uh, india uh, the the Africa, different parts of the world, I plead the blood of Jesus. I take back that which the enemy has stolen. And I pray, Lord God, let your glory manifest in these situations. Bring something good out of this for your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, once again, God bless you. Remember, there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Until I see you again, please be encouraged and uh, be a blessing to someone. Call somebody, reach out to somebody. Uh, there's uh, social distancing, but um, there's no distance in prayer. And let's be proactive to reach out to one another, engage one another in uh, communication through media, social media, uh, telephone. Do the old-fashioned thing. Call somebody today. Pick up the phone and just call somebody and tell them, I just called to see how you were doing. I'm praying for you. And let's encourage one another as we take back our society, take back our lives, take back what belongs to us in Jesus' name. God bless you, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.